Right. So, what we need to do now is uh, uh, worry about uh, uh, giving the statements of uh, <coughs> and of course, the proofs of uh, you know uh, Montel's theorem and uh, uh, Marty's theorem in the case when the domain includes uh, the uh, uh, the point at infinity. Okay. So, uh, so if you recall see all this time we have been doing we have been worrying about uh, domains in the complex plane, but uh, since the last lecture uh, we also wanted to include the uh, infinity as a point in the domain. That means, you are looking at a domain in the external complex plane all right. See the problem with uh, uh, including infinity is that you know uh, uh, compact neighborhood of infinity makes sense only in the extended plane okay. and uh, uh, because it is uh, it corresponds to a compact neighborhood of the north pole on the Riemann sphere the extended plane being identified with the Riemann sphere. Okay. So, uh, but if you take a compact neighborhood of uh, infinity and uh, delete infinity okay, then what you will get is uh, 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 you will get an unbounded domain in the usual complex plane. So, basically it is an unbounded domain. Uh, and uh, along with of course, the boundary uh, the boundary. So, on an unbounded domain we generally do not expect uniform convergence. Okay. We expect uniform convergence only on bounded domains especially on compact subsets okay. and of course, you know compact implies closed and bounded. So, uh, and since you are in Euclidean space it is the same as closed and bounded. So, uh, you do not you should not expect uh, uniform convergence on an unbounded domain okay. that is the rule you will get it only on compact subsets. So, if you take a compact neighborhood of infinity okay, then you will see that uh, it is too much in general it is too much to expect uniform convergence uh, on because it is it is it is unbounded as far as the if you look at it from the complex plane point of view uh, any compact neighborhood of uh, infinity uh, for for that matter any neighborhood of infinity will be an unbounded uh, uh, set in the in the usual complex plane. Okay it will be uh, bounded only with respect to uh, the external complex plane. Okay. So, uh, so that is the reason why we defined uh, what is meant by normal convergence uh, what is what is meant by normal uniform convergence of a sequence uh, or normal convergence of a sequence of functions uh, defined on a domain which contains uh, the point at infinity. Okay. So, the way we did it was if you remember if d is a domain in the external complex plane uh, of course, if the uh, and, and of course, uh, if infinity is a point of the domain then what you do is that you you consider two things uh, you first of all remove in infinity and you get d minus infinity and that becomes a domain in the usual plane and for such a domain you know what uh, uniform uh, convergence on compact subsets that is normal convergence means. So, you make that definition and then to deal with the to deal with uh, uh, you know the point at infinity to deal with normal convergence at infinity what you do is that you invert the variable. So, what you do is you take a neighborhood of infinity you take a neighborhood of z equal to infinity and treat it as a neighborhood of uh, 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 w equal to 0 by putting z equal to 1 by w okay. and then you say now uh, this neighborhood of 0 is anyway uh, 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 it is a it is anyway a neighborhood in the uh, complex plane. So, it makes sense to talk about normal convergence. Okay. So, you define a uh, you define uh, a sequence of uh, functions to converge normally on a on a domain uh, uh, in the external complex plane containing the point at infinity if it individually if 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 individually it converges on d minus infinity and uh, the sequence with uh, the arc uh, the the uh, the variable change from z to 1 by w converges again converges normally in a neighborhood of w equal to 0 uh, which corresponds to a neighborhood of z equal to infinity okay. Uh, uh, and then you know with this modification we found that uh, you know uh, the, the, the limit function to which the if the if the original functions are already continuous the, uh, for example, which is the case when you have analytic functions or meromorphic functions then the limit function is also continuous and uh, 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 and the limit function is of course, unique and continuous because uh, it is a two piece definition there is a definition for the domain minus the point at infinity and there is another definition for a neighborhood of infinity. Okay. So, in principle you could have got two different functions, but because of continuity uh, 
uh, you will get a unique function okay and therefore what we did was uh, we were able to extend uh, these these important results namely that you know uh, if you have a sequence of analytic functions on a domain uh, in the external complex plane if that sequence converges normally on the domain then the limit function is either analytic or it is identically equal to infinity and we also proved the same thing for meromorphic functions if you have a sequence of meromorphic functions on a domain in the extended plane and if that sequence converges normally then the limit uh, function is either meromorphic or it is identically equal to infinity. Now what we need to do is we need to worry about uh, 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 Montel's theorem and uh, Marquis theorem which is a meromorphic version of Montel's theorem uh, to <coughs> you know in the, in the case when the domain of definition of the functions or the family of functions is uh, a domain in the external complex plane okay. So for that we will have to define what is meant by uh, normally sequentially compact uh, uh, for a family of functions defined on a domain in the external plane and that involves a little bit of uh, subtlety uh, but anyway uh, you as we will see everything works out well. So, so let me write this down. So suppose, uh, suppose uh, uh, D uh, in the external complex plane is a, is a domain of course uh, non empty it's open it's an open connected set um, and uh, 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 and 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 let's assume that infinity is a point of t okay so uh, if you uh, so this means that if you remove infinity from d what you'll get on the complex plane is an unbounded domain okay and uh, uh, what we uh, want to do is uh, uh, suppose you have a family of functions defined on this domain uh, I would like to say uh, uh, what it means uh, for the family to be normally sequentially compact okay because after all uh, Montel's theorem the usual Montel's theorem uh, and, Marti, uh, and Marti's theorem are just you know uh, the correct generalizations of the arzel Ascoli theorem okay ne, which say that you know uh, so Montel's theorem says that uh, for analytic functions uh, you know uh, uh, Sequen normally sequentially compact okay that is sequential compactness with respect to normal convergence that is uh, the same as uniform boundedness uh, on uh, uh, compact subsets that is normal uniform boundedness for the family okay uh, and uh, Marty's theorem extends this fr from analytic functions to meromorphic functions okay. So, uh, so we one, one can always be very naive and say that well uh, my definition of uh, uh, a family f being sequentially compact with respect to normal convergence is just uh, that it should be uh, uh, you know uh, sequentially compact with respect to normal convergence when infinity is removed okay. Uh, so on the domain uh, punctured at infinity and to deal with the point at infinity you say that the same family you take the same family and change the variable to uh, from z to 1 by w and you say for this new family defined in a neighborhood of 0 again you should have uh, you know uh, sequentially compact with respect to normal convergence and that is the this is the definition that you will uh, make in line with what we have been doing and uh, uh, if you will see uh, that it is it is the correct definition to make okay. So, uh, so let me write this down um, we say uh, that uh, a family script f uh, uh, of uh, functions on D with values in C union infinity that is the external complex plane is, uh, is normally sequentially compact compact i.e. sequentially compact with respect to normal convergence uh, if uh, number one uh, uh, so f is uh, normally sequentially compact uh, 
on uh, the the domain d punctured at infinity and now I will have to take care of the point at infinity uh, uh, and for that what I will do is that uh, uh, f let me put this as f sub uh, uh, 1 by w this is the set of all f of 1 by w where f belong, belongs to script f. So, I put the subscript 1 by w to tell you that I have changed the I have inverted the argument uh, the independent variable uh, in the function okay. uh, is normally sequentially compact. on uh, a neighborhood of w equal to 0 because you know uh, a neighborhood of w equal to 0 will correspond to a neighborhood of z equal to infinity because w is 1 by z all right. So, this is the uh, so this is uh, uh, so I, I should put this heading as normal sequential compactness. for uh, a domain in the extended complex plane. So, that is the heading right. So, uh, well this seems to be the right definition to make uh, whenever you, 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 you want to deal with a domain which contains a point at infinity you do deal with it in two pieces. One is you throw the point at infinity okay you throw it away namely you puncture the domain at infinity. Uh, so, you get a deleted neighborhood of infinity and you give a definition for that and that is easy to give because a deleted neighborhood of infinity is also a domain in the usual plane okay. And the other thing that you do is that to consider a neighborhood of infinity you consider a neighborhood of 0 by inverting the variable okay. So, um, well now so there are there are couple of things that I want to tell you. Uh, uh, with uh, with respect to the not notation termina terminology and literature and also uh, uh, there is uh, uh, there is another subtlety that I want to point, point to you about. So, the first thing is that you know in the literature this normally this normal sequential compactness uh, is uh, actually abbreviated to normal okay. So, this is a very very important thing see people just use the word normal this is in fact uh, uh, Montel's uh, uh, terminology that instead of every time saying normally sequentially compact you use the word normal and this is uh, this is considered as uh, this is being thought of as a pro property of the family. So, when you say a family is normal it means it is not normally sequentially compact okay. So, uh, so, so wherever uh, uh, normally sequentially compact comes you know uh, then uh, uh, you can just replace it with the word normal okay and uh, and the whole point is that a family being normal is the correct notion of compactness of a family okay that is the whole point okay. So, you know uh, if you are working with general topology and if you are working with uh, continuous functions say uh, real valued or complex valued functions uh, and you are working on a uh, you know compact metric space. Uh, uh, or for that matter you are even working with continuous functions with taking values in from one compact I mean it takes values in another compact metric space okay. Then usually uh, uh, compactness because you are in the context of metric spaces compactness is the same as sequential compactness okay. So, uh, and there uh, uh, what happens is that you your your uh, when you say sequential compactness the, the idea is that you are you are able to say that every sequence admits a convergent subsequence okay and this convergence is with respect to what it's with with respect to uh, for example uh, if you are working with real or complex valued functions it's with respect to the supremum norm okay so there's a supremum norm which induces a, a metric uh, and and its convergence with respect to that metric okay but of course when we are considering the extended complex plane we are using the spherical metric that's one thing that you must always remember okay the extended complex plane is a compact metric space and the metric you are using on that is a spherical metric okay which is actually a spherical metric on the Riemann sphere transported to the extended complex plane okay by the identification of the Riemann sphere with the extended complex plane using the stereographic projection okay. Now, the point is that 
at uh, this is the this is the this is what you will get if you are looking at you know continuous functions but if you are looking at analytic functions the rule is that you cannot expect a uniform convergence on unbounded sets you can expect uniform convergence only on compact subsets and this is called normal convergence okay so when you are when you are in the context of analytic functions or in the context of meromorphic functions okay then you have to worry only about uniform convergence on compact subsets and that's called normal convergence okay and you have to do everything normally okay and uh, the uh, the point is therefore in the context of analytic functions or meromorphic functions the correct notion of compactness is not sequential compactness but it is sequential compactness restricted to compact subsets and that's called normal sequential compactness and uh, Montel's uh, terminology is that you do not say normally sequentially compact you simply say normal okay. So, uh, so this is one uh, uh, you know this is something about terminology that you, you must know. Then the, the, the other thing is um, of course about uh, uh, the subtlety in talking about normal sequential compactness the subtlety is you see a norm, when you say normally sequentially compact it means that it is sequentially compact when restricted to compact subsets and what does sequentially compact I mean if you blindly read for any property P normal P means the property P is supposed to hold when restricted to compact subsets. So, if you go by that normally sequentially compact will mean that you know uh, it will mean that uh, it is sequentially compact when restricted to compact subsets. So, what does that mean it means that you give me a sequence okay then I if you restrict it to a compact subset I will get a convergence of sequence okay. But if I restrict to different compacts if I start with a given sequence okay of functions and if I restrict to different compact subsets I may get different convergence of sequences okay. But the fact is there is it is it is it is more than that you can get uniformly a subsequence which will work on which will converge on every compact subset and this is actually you know another diagonalization argument that we used. Uh, if you if you check so actually you know this uh, normally sequentially compact is as strong as sequentially compact with respect to normal convergence okay sequentially when you say sequentially compact with respect to normal convergence what you mean is that given a sequence I can find a subsequence which is uh, whose convergence is normal normally convergent subsequence which means that same subsequence will converge on when you restrict to any compact subset but when you say normally sequentially compact you might interpret it as you know give me a sequence for every compact subset I will get a convergence of sequence but it looks as if if you change the compact subset the convergence of sequence could change. But the truth is that there is not much difference because you can use always a diagonalization argument okay and you can use a sequence of compact subsets that fill out an increasing sequence of compact subsets that fill out your domain okay that is the argument that we used. So, uh, there is really no confusion in uh, in, in saying normally sequentially compact and sequentially compact with respect to normal convergence that really there is really no difference okay that is because of this diagonalization argument that you can apply on a sequence of compact increasing sequence of compact subsets that can cover your domain okay. So, that is one subtlety then the then here comes the other technical issue the technical issue is that you know uh, 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 again uh, because you are dealing with the point at infinity we have defined normal uh, normality in two pieces we have defined normality outside infinity that is the first uh, requirement and the second requirement is normality at infinity okay. Now, uh, think of it for a moment what does it mean it means suppose I start with a uh, sequence in my family the normality outside infinity will give me a subsequence which will converge on compact subsets outside infinity okay and what will happen is separately for the same sequence of functions I will get another uh, subsequence which will con converge uh, normally at infinity okay. Now, I seem to be getting two different subsequences okay and I do not seem to be getting uh, a single subsequence which will converge both outside uh, uh, normally outside infinity and also at infinity I do not seem to be getting that and the fact is that you can do this okay it is not much of a discrepancy because you see suppose you have a family script f which is normal in this sense okay what you do is start with the sequence in the family okay first go to a neighborhood of infinity okay go to this go to the second uh, go to the second condition namely you go to a neighborhood of infinity uh, which is 
thought of as an Hebrew root of 0 with the variable inverted, there you first pick a subsequence which is uh, 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 you know which, which converges normally at infinity. Okay. Then what you do this subsequence is also anyway a subsequence of the original family which is normal outside infinity. Okay. So, take the same subsequence and now apply it to outs the, the domain outside infinity and you get a further subsequence which will converge normally outside infinity. So, that is that is this new subsequence that you picked up that will be one which will converge both outside infinity and at infinity. Okay. So, uh, even though you are doing it piece wise everything is uh, uh, everything works out fine. Okay. So, you do get a global uh, given give me a give me a sequence you do get a global subsequence okay, which will converge normally both outside infinity and at infinity. Okay. There is there is no confusion all right. only thing is you have to do this twice. All right. So, let me write that down uh, 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 that is uh, that is no uh, 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 ambiguity. in the uh, uh, conclusion of uh, uh, normality for f for uh, if f1 f2 and so on uh, is a sequence in f which is assumed normal on D, then we first pick a subsequence f uh, f n 1, f n 2 and so on uh, that converges normally uh, in a neighborhood of infinity which means that f n 1 of 1 by w f n 2 of 1 by w and so on converges normally in a neighborhood of w equal to 0 this is what it means okay. and then we pick a further subsequence of this subsequence uh, so f n i 1 f n i 2 and so on which also converges normally on d minus infinity. Then uh, this uh, then uh, then this subsequence f n n i 1 f n i 2 uh, so let me use is a subsequence that converges normally on D. Okay. So, there is no problem all right. you, you, are, you are able to get one subsequence that will work both outside infinity and at infinity. Okay. So, this is a this is a little fact that you need to know. So, uh, uh, you know we uh, uh, see uh, th this is just part of a u uh, the usual philosophy in mathematics. So, there are two things I want to say usually what happens is good properties of functions hold on open sets. The other thing is uh, to verify that a good property is uh, true you verify it only locally that means you can verify it at each point in a neighborhood of each point or an, on an open cover. Okay. For example, this is the case with continuity okay, or uh, analyticity and so on. Okay. Good properties if you want to check a function is analytic you check at each point or in a neighborhood of each point if you if you want to check a function is continuous it is enough you check at each point. Okay. So, uh, in the same way you see this normal uh, the, the idea of a normal family is also local. Okay. If you if you say that a family is uh, 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 you know normal 
in pieces okay that is it is normal on an open cover alright then it continues to be normal. So for example uh, 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 what we are saying is that if a family is normal outside infinity and if, if a family is normal in neighborhood of infinity okay this this outside infinity and neighborhood of infinity together constitute constitute a cover okay and uh, for the whole domain and when you say the function is normal outside infinity and at infinity okay then you are getting uh, it is normal on the whole domain okay so you see normality is a local property that is what is that is what is happening all right and it is it is a it is a good property and all good properties are usually local properties you can verify them locally and they are valid on open sets okay. So this is something that you should remember as a philosophy now um, uh, so this should have been normally all right okay so now what I am going to do is now we, now let us go on with uh, now you know with, with, with this background you know it is very easy to write out uh, the analog of uh, uh, Montel's theorem and uh, Marty's theorem for uh, ex domains in the external complex plane okay. So, so here is uh, so here is uh, Montel's theorem so here is Montel's theorem uh, so let me put it as for domains in the external complex plane uh, what is the theorem the theorem is uh, let script f be a family uh, 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 of holomorphic holomorphic or analytic functions on a domain d in the external complex plane then uh, script f is normal is normal if and only if uh, that script f is uh, normally uniformly bounded ok. So, this is the uh, this is Montel's theorem ok where you say that uh, so uh, where you say that normality of the family is the same as non normal uniform boundedness of the functions in the family alright and uh, mind you normality in the family means that uh, it is normally sequentially compact that is it is sequentially compact with respect to normal convergence alright every sequence admits a subsequence which converges normally that is a subsequence which converges uniformly on compact subsets right and normally uniformly bounded is uniformly bounded on compact subsets all right and uh, this normally uniformly bounded on a domain in the extended plane again how do you define that you define it piecewise so what you say is that if you want to say uh, a family of functions is no, uh, is normally uniformly bounded on a domain in the extended plane uh, what you do is that you first say that it is normally uniformly bounded uh, when you throw out infinity so it should be normally uniformly bounded on d minus infinity and then you say that the corresponding family with the variables inverted okay is normally uniformly bounded in a neighborhood of 0 for the inverted variable which corresponds to the neighborhood of infinity of for the original variable okay. So, this normally uniformly bounded also needs to be defined when you consider the point uh, domain which contains the point at infinity but again you def define it in two pieces you define you make one definition outside in uh, infinity and then at infinity the definition you make is by inverting the variable uh, z e, uh, and so that you change z equal to infinity a neighborhood of z equal to infinity which is a neighborhood of infinity you change that to a neighborhood of w equal to 0 where w equal to 1 by z or z equal to 1 by w okay. So, uh, this is Montel's theorem and you can see that you know uh, the, the, the proof of this theorem just comes uh, from the usual Montel theorem because finally what you have done is you have dealt by to deal with the point at infinity uh, you are actually going back to a, uh, uh, 0 by inverting the variable alright. So, the moral of the story is that uh, uh, by by this device you are able to deal with the point at infinity. So, the proof of this uh, this Montel theorem will follow from the usual Montel theorem okay and of course we will uh, you have to worry about uh, one thing namely that when you come from uh, uh, normal uniform boundedness to normality 
okay what you will get is that uh, you will get separately normality outside infinity and you will get separately normality at infinity but i just now we just now discussed that normality is a local property so you will get normality on the whole domain okay so uh, so everything works out fine all right the only thing that i want you to remember is that the at the back of all this how does this differ from uh, the usual arcel haskell theorem the usual arcel haskell theorem says that you know if you want compactness the, uh, then uh, uh, it's the same as se sequential compactness and that is equivalent to you know uh, uniform boundedness and equicontinuity okay so uh, you need equicontinuity all right and of course the usual arcel haskell theorem is for uh, uh, functions uh, defined on a compact metric space but then here you are working with functions on a domain uh, it's certainly uh, not a closed set okay it's an open connected set and therefore what you will have to do is that you will have to go from usual no convergence you have to go to normal convergence so you have to you, you must uh, you, uh, you, instead of expecting uniform convergence on the on the whole domain you should expect only uniform convergence on compact subsets of the domain and then uh, the big deal is as usual you know the uh, you don't have to uh, 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 worry about equicontinuity because equicontinuity is automatic in the, in the case of analytic functions you know uh, the if the functions are original functions are bounded then the derivatives also become bounded and that's because of uh, the cauchy integral formula and uh, the cauchy estimates for the first derivative which can be expressed as an integral of the original function okay therefore uh, if you have uniform normal uniform boundedness uh, of the functions then you have normal uniform boundedness of the derivatives and normal uniform boundedness of the derivatives always implies equicontinuity okay so you get equicontinuity for free okay and therefore the only important condition is the uniform boundedness normal uniform boundedness of the family okay and that's the whole point about mortal theorem and then uh, the extension of this theorem to Mer meromorphic functions is uh, of course marty's theorem so that also works okay um but uh, uh, the the point is that you know in, in when you go to marty's theorem uh, 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 you'll have to uh, uh, you'll have to worry about uh, 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 not using the usual derivatives because at uh, uh, what you are working with are meromorphic functions and at a pole they are not differentiable okay uh, and then you know the 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 trick is to not use the usual derivatives but use the spherical derivatives okay and 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 then uh, you get the analog of mo model theorem for meromorphic functions okay and that is marty's theorem so let me write this down uh, uh, so here let me just mention that uh, the proof uh, 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 follows uh, follows from the usual uh, model theorem for domains in the complex plane uh, and and our remarks above okay and then now let me go on to marty's theorem in montel's theorem uh, you know uh, you can allow the functions uh, uh, to take only complex values because they are analytic functions okay uh, there is no question about taking the value infinity all right so uh, uh, whereas if you go to marty's theorem uh, you will you are considering meromorphic functions and uh, to make such a function continuous at a pole you define its value at the pole to be infinity so you will have to necessarily look at functions with with you know uh, values in the extended complex plane okay so uh, so so here is a statement uh, similar to the statement of montel theorem uh, so in montel theorem we said f is a family of holomorphic functions on a domain d in the extended complex plane now you will say f is a family of meromorphic functions on a domain d in the extended complex plane okay uh, but taking values in the extended complex plane you will have to say that okay and uh, then you also say that uh, uh, then of course the statement is that the family is normal if and only if the family of uh, spherical derivatives is normally uniformly bounded 
that is there ok. So, let me write that out. Uh, let uh, script f be a family of meromorphic functions on a domain d in the extended complex plane uh, taking values in the extended complex plane. Uh, then this family is normal if and only if the corresponding family of spherical derivatives namely you take the spherical derivatives of the functions the original family is uh, normally uniformly bounded. Okay. So, this is multi -stream. So, again let me pinpoint a couple of things. The first thing is that uh, uh, the reason why I am repeating this several times is uh, I want you to no note that there is a uh, the, the, I want you to note these important differences. See when you are looking at meromorphic functions necessarily you will have to use values in the extended plane for two reasons. The first reason is that you want the meromorphic function to be continuous at a pole. So, you define the value at the pole to be infinity ok that is one thing. The second thing is that in the target uh, space uh, you want to have a metric ok. So, uh, you know I want to uh, I want to uh, a function uh, if you are looking at a meromorphic function at a pole it can take the value infinity ok. So, I will have to compa compare infinity the value infinity with finite values with finite complex values and the only way I can do that is by using the spherical metric which is available on the extended plane. So, it is very important that you have to take values in the extended plane and you have to use a spherical metric ok. This has to be done if you are working with meromorphic functions ok. And then the other important thing is that you need to worry about spheric not the usual derivatives, but the spherical derivatives usual derivatives of course, will not work because usual derivatives will not uh, they will not even be defined at a pole ok. So, you will have to work with the spherical derivative which is defined even at a pole and I told you uh, there is no problem with the spherical derivative it is always continuous and even th at a pole it is defined by continuity the pole is a, is a simple pole then the spherical derivative is 2 divided by the modulus of the residue at that simple pole for that function and if the pole is a pole of higher order than the, spheri then the spherical derivative is 0 at, the, at that pole. So, and this is done in a very continuous fashion alright. So, the point is the spherical derivative is a continuous uh, function continuous non-negative uh, real valued function and that is and these are the functions that we are we we, we, have, we have to ensure the uniform boundedness of this of these spherical derivatives ok uh, when restricted to compact subsets ok. Now, that is normal uniform boundedness of spherical derivatives is what we want and, and that is equivalent condition to the original family being normal namely that the original family uh, you know is normally sequentially compact ok. So, so this is uh, this is matrix theorem right. Now, um, so you know uh, uh, this brings us to a, 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 a very important point namely at, at this point you are able to get all the theorems that you want ok by you know including functions which can take the value infinity ok namely meromorphic functions and you can also have functions defined at infinity ok. So, what you must understand is that all these lectures all the all the tools that we built uh, were to tackle two things. First of all you wanted to tackle uh, uh, the function uh, in a neighborhood of infinity ok. That means, you wanted to study function in the neighbor in the neighborhood of the point which is infinity. For example, you that is why we initially we are worried about trying to define uh, when infinity is an isolated singularity and if it is an isolated singularity is it uh, what kind of singularity it is ok. And the trick in all these cases was to replace z equal to a neighborhood of z equal to infinity by a, the a neighborhood of w equal to 0 where w equal to 1 by z ok. And you know you must understand that this uh, z going to w that is 
kind of uh, 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 it's a homeomorphism okay uh, of the uh, Riemann sphere onto itself. Uh, if, if you want, it's a home, it's a it's a self homeomorphism of the extended plane onto itself, which you can think of it also as a isomorphism of uh, self homeomorphism of the Riemann sphere onto itself. And what happens is that the infinity is uh, you know is 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 identified to the north pole, origin zero is identified to the south pole, okay. And it's just this uh, the the inversion is just switching the north and south poles of the of the Riemann sphere, okay. And this inversion is a very nice thing it uh, it doesn't change the spherical distance because uh, essentially inversion corresponds to a rotation of the riemann sphere by 180 degrees uh, with respect to the real axis the x axis okay so uh, so the point is that you can deal with the point at infinity okay that is one aspect then the other aspect is you can deal with these uh, functions which have which have poles namely, namely meromorphic functions by allowing the value infinity okay so on the whole we have built up built up all these tools to uh, deal with meromorphic functions even so you can look at a family of meromorphic functions even defined in a neighborhood of infinity and work with it okay that is the uh, generality uh, to which we have defined things and now we'll use all this uh, in then in the next few lectures to prove the picard theorems okay so i'll stop here